A very warm Sunday afternoon to all of you. We are so excited you are joining in our HR webinar. My heart goes out to all those who are battling with um, the flood and the bad weather right now. But I'm also on the same note, happy to say that this will be online and those who miss it out, they can always revisit and go through the whole webinar, which is going to be very beneficial to you. Once again, a very warm Sunday afternoon to all of you. This is Altab Khan, and we are live streaming on behalf of New Fiji. We will soon begin with our first webinar series for um, 2020. And we have a whole range of webinar series planned for 2022. So we will keep you updated on the next. And we are at least planning to have uh, a couple in a month or um, once a month with the other activities that we carry out here at Youth Fiji. <coughs> and this, I repeat, is once again fully sponsored by Youth Fiji, and we are very pleased to announce today that we have now 16,250 members, and we are getting new members every day on our network, and we would like to give you our heartfelt thanks for joining us, and we are hoping that you are mutually benefiting from engaging with us at the same time. UCG is a voluntary group targeting um, to um, mentor, coach, guide, and advise thousands of youths, job seekers, graduates, and those wanting to upskill simply. And also, we provide a lot of motivational aspect of things on our channels as well. I would like to acknowledge our incredible executive team who are working behind the show or who are behind the Youth VG activities that we usually carry out. They are doing a marvelous job. As you all know, this is a voluntary um, establishment, but we are really um, wishing to uh, ensure that a lot of people benefit through the activities that we are currently doing. Before we deep dive into the core part of today's conversation, I would like to let you know of some. Um, I would like you to know that you can put questions through the chat box if you are participating from Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. However, if you are logged in through our website, please click on the questions tab to key in your questions or concerns that you may have. Um, we will not have questions in between when the speakers are speaking. However, we will allow, we have a team which will collect questions and the names of um, those who have those questions. We will um, give those questions out in the open uh, room that we are going to have sooner or later. After I introduce our HR speakers, we will begin a experience sharing session by each guest speaker that we have today. And this will take roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. Once all speakers have finished their insights, we will extract all questions that filters in and open the virtual floor for some great feedback and Talanwa session. Now, I have a little... Um, offer to our listeners this afternoon. If we find that somebody has some very valid and very, um, um, you know, good questions, we will offer you free CV consultation services. So what we'll do is you can reach out to us and we can have a look at your CV or I can get like few other HR practitioners to have a look at your CV and give you advice on what you can change, what you can update to make your CV look very attractive and stand out. Okay, so that's our offer that we have for you this afternoon. Please take advantage of this opportunity to clarify any questions that you may have um, to your own benefit. 
and how you can apply this for your personal transition. Once again, welcome to those who have just logged in. And um, we will now start our HR talk show. Please allow me to introduce to you our panel of speakers who have been very instrumental in HR governance and our subject matter experts. So we have, we were very lucky that our invitation got accepted by our HR experts this afternoon on a Sunday when everybody has a lot of things to do. I am so appreciative that they still made that effort to unite with us for this good cause. Thank you very much, all our speakers. Now I will introduce our speakers to our virtual participants. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our speakers for the day. And now, please allow me to introduce each one of you to you this afternoon. And our first speaker for the day is Mr. Vinitesh Kumar. Mr. Vinitesh hails from the beautiful Singatoka Valley. He is the general manager, people, culture, and corporate services for Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission. He has been on senior HR roles for multiple organizations in the country, such as Jack's Group of Companies, Digicel, Fiji, LTA, and has over 11 years of experience in the field of human resources and training. Mr. Vinitesh holds a Bachelor of Commerce in Human Resources Management Industrial Relations and Management. He is a postgraduate. He has a postgraduate diploma in Public Administration and Management, Masters of Commerce, Management and Public Admin, and postgraduate governance. He is a registered trainer with Fiji National University, a Fiji Business Excellence Award Evaluator and a Certified Manager of Quality Organization Excellence. Vinitesh is an active member to the Fiji Human Resources and Australian Human Resources Institute. Vinitesh has also been a part-time trainer with Fiji National University. Mr. Kumar, wholeheartedly, we welcome you to today's webinar. Thank you very much. Now I will move on to introducing our next speaker for this afternoon. And it's none either than the one and only Mrs. Jyotika Roy. Jyotika comes with a wealth of experience with 30 plus years. I repeat myself, 30 plus years of experience as a human resource practitioner in PG. She is currently the head of human resources, learning and development and wellness at the Tapu Group of Companies. Jyotika has held senior executive positions in human resources for big corporates such as the Jex Group of Companies, Carpenters Group, Ashabai Company Limited. She has also been a part-time tutor with Fiji National University specializing with the TAFE programs. Jyotika acquired her Masters of Business Administration from the University of the Sunshine Coast, Workplace Counseling Certificate from U USP, Diploma in HR with TAFE, a Postgrad Certificate, Diploma in Management and Masters in Management Work from USP. She is also a registered and certified trainer with FNU and FIT Australia, and she is a strong believer in continuously learning. And currently she is pursuing her further studies from University of the South Pacific and passionately 
doing her degree in psychology and sociology. She is a member to the Fiji and Australian Human Resource Institute and a member to the Fiji Psychological Society. She engages in a lot of activities such as career fairs and other similar activities with universities around the country. She loves to coach and mentor. And while I was having a conversation with her, she quoted, I, if I can do things to make an impact, I encourage you all to go out there and do something great for yourself and be the best version of you. She is soon to release a book of her life's journey to empower women around the world. This book will be called My Journey. Thank you so much, Shotika, for joining us today. It's a great honor to have you on show today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome Mrs. Cheryl Kumar Vere. Cheryl is the Group Human Resources Manager for the Ready Group, which is the parent company of the Tanwa Group of Hotels. She has served in the human resources field for more than a decade and engaged with great organizations such as Jack's Group of Companies, Fiji National University as the training of the trainers facilitator. So she's been training all the trainers out there. And it's just an honor to have her on with us this afternoon as well. Cheryl has a postgraduate certificate in human resources management, degree holder with bachelor's in tourism studies and management, public administration, and a registered trainer with Fiji National University. She is a member to the Fiji Australian Human Resources Institute. She champions in recruitment, talent identification, and development, performance management, and employee well-being. When I asked her about her passion, she stated that I want to help make people's life easier to live. How beautiful and compassionate is that? Knowing I made a positive difference in somebody's life, gives me personal satisfaction. And this is where the modern HR practice is leading us to. Thank you very much, Cheryl. We welcome you to the HR Grab a Coffee talk show. And our last speaker, not the least, is Mr. Ashish Ram. Ashish is currently the manager of Human Resources for Water Authority of Fiji. He has been a practitioner for almost a decade as well. His experience in, in this specialization comes from a diversified range of organizations in our country, such as Denim Fiji, Fair Trade, Digicel, and all of them in le various leadership and supervisory roles. Ashish accomplished his Bachelor of Commerce in Business Management, Human Resources Management, and Industrial Relations from the Fiji National University. He later pursued his postgraduate certificate from University of Fiji and recently graduated with a postgraduate diploma in Entrepreneurship and Management. Ashish has been a catalyst of change for the organizations that he has been engaged with. And he believes in giving back to the community as one of his aspirations and is passionate about learning human intelligence in business and human psychology at workplace. He is a member to the Fiji and Australian Human Resource Institute. Ashish, it gives us great pleasure to welcome you to our platform this afternoon. And thank you once again to everybody who is just dialing in. All right, without taking much of your time, I will now invite 
our first speaker to start her, um, to deliver her message to all of us. And I want to let you know that all of them this afternoon have very resourceful information for you. Our first hour to this talk show will be each speaker's highlighting their challenges in recruitment. Hence, this creates an awareness of what to eliminate when you go for your next recruitment drive or when you apply for your next job or when you go for your next interview. So this is more of a reverse psychology learning where you will know, okay, these are the things that I need to eliminate and they will top it up with some great tips and ideas to make you one of the best candidates. Ladies and gentlemen, now I am inviting our first speaker for the day, Mrs. Jotika Roy. Jatika, please um, unmute yourself Thank you. and go ahead. Thank you, Alta. Thank you for the lovely introduction and kind words. Good afternoon, all. Welcome to HR Talk Show once again. It is a great pleasure to see a huge number registered at our talk show today. It is an indication that you are eager and are serious to find employment and to create career paths. Some of you also must be frustrated as to why you have not been selected for a role you had been interviewed for or guidance to reflect upon. I think it's opportunity to use Fiji for inviting the HR practitioners to share the experiences on this platform. We will be sharing the challenges HR practitioners encounter in finding the right candidates and organizations. I will be sharing real life experiences, which probably may not be the same with others. However, there are some common challenges. Before I start sharing the challenges, whether you're a graduate or not, every person has a passion and potential within them. So the employment opportunities are not limited, it is for all. The common challenges HR encounters are Significant applications are elected from the total number of applications submitted because they are not, they do not meet the criteria for the role advertised. Position advertised, giving the impression that they are either desperate for work or are aware, unaware of what each role is require them to know or to do. Applicants do not thoroughly read the employment requirements before applying. Certain license accreditations are necessary. Requirement for role, although those who do not meet the standard do still submit the case. Incorrect or invalid mobile or mobile numbers of family members are listed on EV. Applicants change their mobile numbers frequently, which is a setback for the timely recruitment. At times, mobile numbers are either diverted or switched off. Applicants are either not showing up for the interview at all or are turning small numbers. Applicants are blind without understanding what the role is about. The CV is paired by someone else, does not have full information on the CV. Some attend interviews handed fail to provide documents that has been requested on the advertisement. Some of the explanations by candidates for not presenting the documents is either destroyed in natural disaster or bring the documents with them, or it is at the hometown. Have high salary expectations if they if they are ready, even if they don't have experience. They, have, they come in with that mind. Some are confident that they will carry out the special. However, salary expectations are beyond the rate market rate and are not willing to negotiate. Candidates attend interviews. Once the decision is made to substantiate employment, they advise the hour that they are no longer interested in the role. 
However, some may offer, but do not turn up on the day they're supposed to act with. Facial expressions and of responding to the recruitment panel indicates poor attitude and mannerism. There are times where candidates uh, don't even meet and greet and not even smile when they come in for interview. Some may be really good with paperwork but lacks confidence. I have warned during the interview, your self-presentation at the interview is very important as you're going to represent the brand. Applicants, specifically students, advise during the interview that they are looking for a full-time permanent job, but the university is open, either they resign or stop coming. Referee details, certain details provided in the CV is unapproachable. So we find it very difficult to contact the referees. HR expectations from the candidates. Applicants must read the advertisement and assume their responsibilities and requirements. Apply for the position if they meet the criteria. An applicant should know which role they are applying for and do some ground checks about the company. Be well aired. First impressions are very important. Be presentable. Proper grooming and official attire. Don't overdress yourself. Provide correct contact details. If you don't have a phone, provide contact of next key. Inform the next of key that you have listed their mobile contact in your CV. There are times when you call the next of key, they only know the applicant's nickname. So it becomes very hard. CVs must be concise yet informative. Summarize the skills briefly. Show up on time for the interview or probably turn up 10 minutes earlier to settle in and ease. Inform the recruiter if you are not able in the interview on the scheduled day and reschedule for another suitable day and time. Be confident, well spoken. Be honest in your responses. Applicants must attend interviews prepared with all relevant, relevant documents and it must be in order. Applicants need to be honestly sh sharing the information on the mode of employment they are looking for. Local, but with the right tone. While doing the app test or psychometric test, be calm, listen, properly before attempting the test. There's some online uh, self-testing web uh, apps and there's so many aptitude tests which is online. You can go and do, do the test online and know the know-how. So when you go and attend the interview, you are familiar with the app. Ask questions to the interview panel for any clarifications you think to sort. Referee details must be correct, the name, contact, and email address. However, there are applicants who present themselves very well. However, it depends on the role they have. They speak well and are quite confident of themselves. They come in with positive attitude and with interest. Do take this feedback positively as this will be better you for the interview and it would be easier for the recruiters to select best candidates for the role. Practitioners have the challenge to recruit the best suited candidates, good knowledge, skills and attitude. You're welcome to ask questions or drop in your queries and we would be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you for listening attentively. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much, Jyoti. That was absolutely marvelous. And um, I can see that um, you have um, given in a lot of very important details that, um, you know, uh, someone shouldn't miss when they are trying to be hired for positions. So this was some great information we appreciate. And um, uh, to our visual listeners online this afternoon, if you do have any specific question for Mrs. Jyotika Roy, please do leave it in the check box and we will get that across to you um, 
in the next hour or so. Now, without taking much of the time, may I now kindly invite Mr. Vinitesh Kumar to um, uh, give his um, uh, presentation. Thank you, Mr. Vinitesh. Thank you, Altab, uh, for that. And uh, thank you, Jyotika, for sharing that uh, information for this. And uh, welcome everyone for this uh, webinar. And uh, first of all, thanks to the youth, uh, Fiji, uh, Altab and Chanil for inviting us to share our experiences and what we are going through in doing rec recruitments and uh, selection of employees at this very moment. Uh, my topic today basically was on uh, recruitment challenges, but I have uh, basically linked it how digitalization plays a part towards uh, recruitment. Uh, just on uh, starting on, in this uh, today's presentation, probably I'll be sharing some of the common recruitment challenges, the modern day recruitment challenges, uh, how the psychometric test uh, goes and associated issues towards it, the key challenges brought by COVID as well, how participants and how the employers are basically facing difficulties in, and employers advise, uh, some of my advice I can give in terms of uh, when you are doing your job hunting. Uh, Recruitment, for my I say that recruitment now is changed the way it was done before. It's basically not the same it was. Uh, COVID has made us rethink and we have to, I'll be sharing more into employer's perspective. So a lot of things has been changed in terms of recruitment, in terms of training, development and capacity building as well. Uh, just a background, recruiting individuals uh, with a precise range set of skills, experience, and know-how to fill a vacancy is always a tough task. That's never an easy task for the employers to do that. We always face difficulties in doing that, especially when you're recruiting for technical positions or positions that the educations are not available in Fiji. And uh, then you have to source it out. Further on, uh, the ever-changing job market, industrial uh, environments and the organizational operations complicates the task. There's a lot of uh, changing uh, job changing markets as well. There's a broad range of variables and factors uh, that the employers consider in securing the services of the right candidate. Uh, basically, you would sometimes wonder, why am I not called for the interview? Why am I not being uh, selected? I've been applying for the organization so many times, but there's so many internal factors that the organization considers. There's factors within the organization that they need to consider while recruiting. There's uh, industry-wide factors as well. Also, uh, the organizations always look for the right fit. The organizational's future, they look at two candidates, how candidates will benefit them. And individuals' character, experience, skills, and job demands is also uh, very important. And it bundles with so, much, so many other factors what uh, my previous speaker has shared uh, in this. Some of the modern day challenges in terms of uh, recruiting, uh, recruitment challenges, uh, I'll basically share a few, a lot of has been shared by uh, my previous speaker, uh, but I'll share the modern day one. The first three is then, uh, the first three points that I'll share are the modern challenges. The first thing is that changing recruitment strategies. The strategies of all the organizations nowadays has been changed. Uh, in Fiji especially, uh, people are working from home, people are not able to do recruitments, but however, they have to make the organization move. So the move towards digitalization comes in. That's where psychometric test, aptitude test comes in. So the strategy of recruitment has been changed. Creating an efficient recruitment process is also a challenge for the employers nowadays and choosing the right candidate and the right career. Um, I'll just uh, like to share some things. Uh, few organizations in the country currently, they, they, are, they have positions vacant, but we don't have candidates available for that role. Uh, for my organizations personally, we have few roles that we have advertised almost five to six times because we are not able to find the right candidate due to the technical aspects of the position. We receive almost 100, 200 applications for role, but it's hard to fit in. Then we do receive calls for the applicants, why we, are, why we are not selected for this role, this and that. But at the end of the day, we as an employer, we need to understand is the person fitting in because it's not the matter of choice of a short run, it's a matter of a choice of a longer future for the organization. And we need to make the right choice when we're doing recruitments. The next thing is that the big, the big one is attitude in the interview process. Uh, attitude of a candidate in the interview process is very much needed. Uh, 
Another example I'll share in this that I was doing an interview for one of the candidates uh, two years ago. So we, so I asked the question to the person, can you please tell me about yourself? And he said, can you please look at the CV? So if you are sharing those, those kind of things with the candidates uh, to the panel member, it becomes more difficult for them to make decision. And you might be the brightest, you might be the job fit at that moment, but you have lost it just because your attitude was not in point. So those things are important to have. Also, there's a high expectation from the employees, uh, from the applicant, sorry, and uh, that high expectations are sometimes not met. Uh, sometimes the new graduates, they come in, we do understand they don't have experience, they don't have the kind of trainings, how will they start the job? But the expectation they have, you know, uh, expectation in terms of salary expectation, in terms of reporting expectations, those does not fit the job uh, role that is uh, advertised. Excuse me. Moving on, uh, basically, as I mentioned, changing recruiting recruitment strategies. I would be sharing some of the psychometric, uh, one of the major part there was psychometric uh, test. That is very important. Psychometric test is very important nowadays. There's a move towards digitalization. There has been many organizations in the in the world that uh, the HR is fully uh, automized. The whole system is automized. There is no HR department. Everything is done by the system. And in that way, you need to be very digitalized as well as an applicant. Psychometric test, people are confused what is the difference between psychometric test, exams, and aptitude test. Basically, in psychometric test, personality and interest uh, test, aptitude ability test, and, and then the psychometric selection test is done. In this, basically, is these tests are designed to measure intellectual ability and indicates the potential of the candidate to excel in specific position. <clears throat> this test, uh, reliability, the questions, the questions are asked about the reliability of the applicant. It validates uh, the applicant. Sorry about that. Uh, it also, also sees the uh, proof that the person is a job fit and how honest the candidate is in terms of uh, the job test. As mentioned by uh, uh, my previous speaker, that uh, the applicants do apply, but is somebody else applying on behalf of them? But when they come into these kind of stages, they are caught. The reliability and they're not able to validate if it was them. Also, uh, the recruiter through psychometric assessment, they see the strength and weakness of the candidate. That is very important. Uh, it also gives the oversights into potential employees' mental ability, skills, intelligence, personality traits, motivations, and interests. So when you are attending the psychometric assessments, please be calm, do the right thing, and take your time to answer. Remember, psychometric test is not getting it right but getting it in the best way you can. Okay, because the reason why like, most of the people, they do psychometric tests now, because employees are now looking for multi uh people. So for example, uh, this COVID has made us think, the employees are thinking, you know, if you are a customer service officer, during this COVID, if there is no job of the customer service officer, which area will, will you fit in? You know, those kind of things, uh, has been making the organizations going and doing psychometric assessments. Okay, uh, further on, I'll say some of the stats uh, that uh, my organization that are, we have used. Uh, we have done psychometric assessment for almost, uh, we have invited 2,278 applicants for psychometric exams. We did total of 33 assessments, 484 were able to finish it. And 42, we're currently going on with current 42. Some of the issues, you can see the stats, very strong knowledge, strong knowledge, moderate knowledge, limited knowledge, and little to no knowledge. The stats are there. This is basically done by system. There's no interference of the HR department. There's no, no interference of any human being there. It's just a system based. The issues we face from this, and the timelines are given that you need to go and attempt this at this particular time, by this particular date. 
you need to have your internet up and running then you can do this people do not read uh, applicants do not read the terms and conditions that we send on behalf before the exam what we get five to ten calls on a day why is the uh, exam not working why is this why is it this why is that but all the details are written uh, in that it's basically the meta is read when it comes to you first before attempting it and also people candidates needs to go into digitalization mode now it's not only phone it's not only facebook it's not only instagram and uh, TikTok and uh, snapchat there's more than it digitalization is more than that <coughs> just a few advice employers advice when job hunting Employees advice when job hunting, I always have a positive mindset and a willingness to work. Please, when you're applying, do have that. Uh, have a self-motivation and be enthusiastic and be prepared to learn and take directions. There's always issues. Sometimes we do recruit people, but they're not prepared to learn and take directions. You need to know your strengths. Do not apply for every role. Apply where you suit, where you are suited. Because remember, as a recruiter, we see all the applications that you get. We know where you are applying. Prepare well for interviews. Prepare for change in the recruitment process. Before, it was just recruitment. You apply. You'll be called for the process. Now, the process has changed. The public sector recruitment is different than the private sector recruitment. Some are recruiting through virtually through Zooms. Some are recruiting through face to face. -to -face. Just on that. Uh, I was doing an interview on Zoom, two, three interviews on Zoom. Uh, what candidates does, they open another laptop on the side that says the answers there. And we can read the body language of the particular person and they give the answers from that end. And those things are not good. That particular person would be a very smart person, but still you lose it because you are not honest in your job interview. And the last one, adapt yourself towards a digitalization process. And after doing that, then you can ask yourself, are you ready? When you are, you have done all those things, then you can ask a question. Are you ready towards the new recruitment strategies? Remember, it's just not face-to-face -face anymore. It's just not recruit, it's just not uh, your application than CV anymore. There's more towards it. There's more towards it, and we have been sharing that. I've shared a uh case study on the side there's recently coca-cola in vietnam the future the hr is all uh atomized there's no more hr interference the recruitment there is more tighter than what we are in having it here so please make yourself ready thank you vinitesh thank you so much for this beautiful presentation that you just did and um, it's um, quite uh, shocking like to see the last part that you showed us of um, the artificial intelligence that's being used in recruitment now and um, you know we we're so lucky in Fiji right now that you know we haven't really got to that stage but before we miss the train, guys, we need to start getting into the new norm. We still, you, we need to start, you know, upgrading ourselves and and start knowing what's out there waiting for us in the coming future, isn't it? All right, thank you so much, Vinitesh. We have some nice questions, but eventually, as soon as the other two speaker finishes. Once again, Vinaka Vakalevu. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome our next speaker for the day, who is none either than Miss Cheryl, Mrs. Cheryl Kumar Vere. Cheryl, over to you. Thanks, Alta. So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Thanks, Vinit and Jyoti for sharing experiences. I am sure everyone is benefiting from these. It is indeed an honor to be of assistance to you all. Thank you for taking out your time on this Sunday afternoon. And I hope my input will add value to your lives. 
So allow me to take you to when we are choosing which programs to take at tertiary level, you know, how when we finish our high school and then we are thinking about what to choose, which program to study. It is vital for us to have a career path. So what is your passion? And I know sometimes what we want is not what we get to choose, especially when it has to do with securing scholarships. But nevertheless, we need to know what career options are available if we are choosing a certain discipline of study. We need to think what is your aspired position and how will you reach there? Your how to reach there is very important. It is utterly unrealistic to assume that once you have graduated with a degree, we can take up the role of a manager. My colleague has already explained um, the importance of reading advertisements well. So when I finished school, just a bit of my personal experience, my mom always told me to read job vacancies. She told me to read the paper from the last page so I won't get lost in between and I won't miss the adverts. And I'm still very interested in reading adverts even today. And I have a le learned a lot from that experience. You get to see which roles are available in the job market. You understand what studies you need to take up to perform the role of say a software developer. You learn how many years of experience is needed to become the director of sales. And you see what trade certificates and tests you need to pass to be a certified electrician. So you learn so many things. I urge you to please read the vacancies and read not just to apply, but to learn as well. And of course, there are immeasurable benefits to being your parents. Never ignore that, my friends. Secondly, have a career path. Finishing your tertiary education allows you entry into the work industry. We stay relevant at work by continuing to study and attending training programs. So find out what other development programs you need to complete to progress on your career path. Aspire to prepare yourself for the desired role physically, emotionally, and mentally as well. Let me dwell a while on the actual interview process. So there are always three attributes that interviewers look for when conducting interviews. These three are KSAs, it is known as in the industry, K is knowledge, skills, and attitude. So knowledge is, does this person know how to do the job? This, these are the things which is going on into the mind, in the mind of the interviewers when you are sitting on the other side giving your interview. So does this person know how to do the job? Skills is, can this person do the job? Attitude is, does this person have the right attitude, behavior set, the personality to perform this job effectively? So many jo top performing organizations today focus on hiring for attitude. We say hire for attitude and train for skills. You see the culture of any organization is key and recruitment recruiters want to hire people who can understand this become part of the team and perform for the success of the organization. So before attending the interview, try to understand the values of the organization and see if you will be able to fit in. Probably call and talk to somebody who works there if you know them, visit the website and in today's world, visit the Facebook page. There's a lot of things you get to find out on Facebook. Have the right attitude. Before you go into the interview room, if you have been shortlisted and called for the interview, read and be familiar with what is required. Sometimes we get so busy in our normal lives and, and we do not prepare ourselves for the interview. Please do not make that mistake. Prepare, prepare yourself well. Read the advert again if you need to familiarize with what is written there. Research about the company. Get to know what the vision, mission and the values of that company are. See if your personal values, goals, and objectives in life matches with that of that particular organization where you're going to give your interview. It makes you look more appealing as a candidate if your personal values matches with the organization. Know the venue and know how to reach there. Be there before time so that you can calm yourself down. If you are late or just on time, you are not calm. And you might think you are okay, but your body pressure needs to sort of normalize and your answers will be rushed and your heavy breathing will start to show. So try to be at rest. Research about the potential questions and prepare the answers. This is so you don't feel lost, but have backup answers stored up in your mind. There will be a question, obviously, expect this team on what do you know about so-and-so company? What do you know about this company? And the other question is, why do you want to apply? 
So research and reflect on that question. Look within yourself. Why do you want to apply into this company? Research will give you the answer to this question. And when asked, avoid quoting from the book, from the website. Use your own words. Give examples. This shows that you are generally interested in that particular organization. And there are heaps of ideal questions on Google. Be ready also for situational and scenario-based questions and have backup answers. This means you'll need to think back uh, into your experiences or probably in conversations. If you're not experienced in conversations that you have had with your family members or friends. In the hospitality industry, that is where I come from. If you go for a chef's interview, you may be asked to do a dish after the theory interview. If you attend the interview of a barmaid, you might be able to ask, uh, you might be told to prepare a cocktail mix, you know, or maybe if you're going for, for a waitress position, you might be asked the question, um, have you handled a disgruntled guest? How did you handle it? So these are some of the situational and scenario based questions that you need to expect to be asked. Prepare for these questions. So this is your preparation mode. When you actually attend the interview, be confident. Of course, not overconfident. Over or overconfidence will always get you in trouble. So try to be confident only. Mind your body language. Be down to earth and simple to the point. Show equal respect to all the members of the panel, interview panel. Watch your body language again and your facial expressions. Do not show that you are looking down or showing less respect to a seemingly junior member of the panel. Some panels have scribers, people who take down notes. Please do not think that they are junior members. Treat everyone with equal respect. Mind your eye movement as well. Sometimes we tend to focus on one side of the panel. Please try to give equal attention to everyone sitting. Non-verbal communication is very critical. So in a face-to-face -face conversation, body language and facial expressions can have an incredible impact on how information is interpreted. A person's body language and our first impression of them can heavily influence decision-making. So you either make it or you break it at this stage. Eye contact with respect. Try to look at everyone and avoid looking, like I said, towards one side of the panel. Now, we do understand, the panel will also understand that we live in Fiji. And in, in our culture over here, um, some of us, are, we feel hesitant to look at people eye to eye and talk. We think or we feel it is more respectable for us to look down and speak. But in today's age and era team, we need to respectfully look at people in the eye and answer questions. Next is how you present yourself physically. Sit up straight, you look smart and you look composed. Do not fidget. You know, some of us have the habit of shaking, shaking our legs or fidgeting with a pen in our hands. Do not do that. Put the pen down, do not fidget. Take a deep breath to stabilize yourself if you are nervous. Now, another way to stabilize yourself is think positive thoughts about yourself to maintain your calmness. Think, yes, I can do this. I've got this. Think good things about yourself. And then, of course, we need to listen to the questions well before answering. Do not avoid jumping in and answering the question before it has been completed. Think and answer if needed. Be honest. Now, this is very important. If you do not know the answers, Please say so. Don't make up answers. Believe me, 99% of the time, the interview panel, people who are sitting in the interview panel have hands-on experience of the job role. And they know the answers and cannot be fooled. So it is better to be honest and say you do not know the answer rather than lying and being ruled out altogether. Huh? Try to understand what the question is. Again, think and answer. Try and link, when you're giving answers, try and link the answer to the product or the service provided or sold by the company. You are showing that you did your homework. Know your documents. If you are bringing a file to the interview, know in which order your certificates are kept in. What all did you include in your application letter when you sent it? Be ethical. The documents that you're presenting to the panel, please do not forge or man manipulate these documents. Do not lie. Some companies have policies that warrant instant termination for false documentation or information that is provided at recruitment. So please try to maintain ethics and honesty at all times. Jyoti has already spoken about dressing. 
dress modestly and appropriately for the industry in which you are applying in. Avoid heavy makeup and extraordinary colors. Let it complement your attire. Do not overdress. And of course, don't be too casual. We can't expect to attend the interview with, you know, uh, dressing which is too relaxed. I know I'm being, I'm being very specific, but believe me, <laughs> this specific information helps out a lot. Comb your hair well and tidy. Wear natural or low fragranted perfumes, nothing sharp. Mind your top and skirt length. Do not be a distraction. Check beforehand on grooming standards of that particular organization, if you can, or at least suit the industry. Check your facial hair. Relax and take the interview as a conversation. Now, this is a tip that was given by one of my previous managers in my past employees. He says every interview is a conversation, so we must treat it that way. In an interview, remember, and this is out of my personal experience, nothing is off the record. So anything that you talk about in the interview, even though the interviewer is saying so off the record, what do you think of this? And you think, okay, off the record, I think this, this, and that. Do not think that it's off the record. It's never off the record. Everything counts in decision-making. Um, obviously, you must have attended interviews or you are intending to. Uh, they, uh, when you submit your CV, you give names of referees and the employer will do reference checks. So reference checks is a very important part of recruitment. This is when the uh, interviewer or the HR department will call or uh, contact your past employers. So one of the questions again that is normally asked during interviews is, do you have any adverse past employment experiences that you wish to declare? So at this time, what happens is obviously you or the interviewer, interviewees want to impress the employer and we tend to hide some embarrassing facts that we had with previous organizations. Again, my advice to you is be honest, be honest. Even if it was a termination case, even if something you left on a bad note or something, if it was a disciplinary case in your past employment, please declare it very aptly um, in the interview session. The reason why I'm saying that is because some employees are very compassionate here in Fiji. We understand that people make mistakes. The important thing is when you make a mistake, you need to understand a mistake has been done, learn from it and move on. We uh, Recruiters today understand that once we realize our mistakes, we will do better to ensure it does not happen again. So please be honest about things. Do not wait for the employer to do a reference check and find out about this particular bad record from the reference check. Declare beforehand so that a recruiter is prepared and then let the decision be whatever the decision is. At least you are being honest and ethical. Obviously today in today's year 2022, 20, from 2020, the new norm has kicked, it, kicked in and we need to practice it regardless of whether people are comfortable in practicing it or not. Ask for permission if you need to remove your mask. Place the mask in a clean manner on the table. You know how on the other side of the mask, a lot of colors get stamped into the mask. Mind how you're putting your mask on the table. Fist bumping instead of handshaking. You, 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 you need to understand that in the HR department, staff are very particular about these procedures that need to be followed. So even if you see that the panel is not practicing it, there is somebody's eye that is out there who's watching you and seeing if you are adhering or not. And first impression again is the lasting impression. So we need to do it right the first time. Again, if you want to postpone the interviews, things happen, maybe there's a rain and your road gets flooded or some things happen, be genuine and call way before the interview as much as possible. Do not wait for the organization to call you to follow up on where you are on the day of the interview and then inform them your reasons and request for a postponement. Make the effort yourself and kindly request for a change. Try your best to go with the organization's arrangements. So, but if you really can't, please make the effort to do it yourself. Even if when you are making a phone conversation, somebody calls you for an interview, please speak decently with the person calling for the interview as well. Again, uh, another very important aspect that I really like you to keep in mind is never bad mouth about a past employer or your current employer. So that's another must question that will come to you when you are sitting in the interview room is why do you leave? Why do you want to leave your current organization? Or you might be asked, why did you leave this particular organization? And when you are saying that it, they didn't pay me well, or you give examples of how 
you think they looked after you in a very incorrect manner, when you start to bad mouth or give bad reports about such experiences, it creates a questionable perception about yourself. Because obviously everyone understands every organization, no organization is perfect. Every, every employer is wanting to be the best employer, be the employer of choice out there in the industry. They are trying their best to look after their staff well. And not everyone will like the efforts. So we will have good experiences and we will have not so good experiences. We need to be very professional in how we are portraying that information to the interview panel. Be professional, candid, and very apt. Finally, since 2022, majority of us are using more of technology. We also conduct interviews online. So just a few little tips apart from what my friends have already discussed. Um, if you have a virtual interview, please prepare yourself as equally well as you would for a face-to-face -face interview. Follow everything that we have spoken to you about. In addition to that, please dress well appropriately for the virtual Zoom interview or whether it's on Teams or video Viber, et cetera. Dress well. Choose an appropriate background, something plain or neat would do. Choose an appropriate venue. Where are you going to sit with your laptop or your phone? Where excessive noise is not filtering it through the mouth, from the, through the mic. And obviously, if you have children around, guys, it's absolutely okay to say, I have my kid, he's wanting to, you know, he, he's wanting my attention. It's okay to say that to your interviewers because your interviewers on the other side of the screen are also humans. And they understand in today's generation, we have to do online interviews and there are distractions and hiccups and you know normal day-to-day -day things that go on. So please be yourself and be normal. Um, don't get over-conscious about how you're portraying yourself when family members are around, et cetera. Test the internet, the network strength to avoid the line from breaking when you are speaking. Avoid reading from the screen, you know, um, sometimes, especially in a phone interview, we prepare for the answers and we ask the questions and we read. Um, so try to avoid that during our virtual interviews because experienced interviewers can identify this well. Prepare and present as you would for a face-to-face -face interview, like I said. So finally, coming to the conclusion of my session, if you do not get the job, this is a reality of life. Some of us, we, we send in many applications through postal email or through interviews and we wait. We, I have done that myself when, you, when I was wanting a job um, before Jyoti hired me. Um, we, we go and wait for the email responses. Um, have, am I being called for an interview? Have I been shortlisted? So, and, and we are desperate for jobs. If you do not get a positive reply, my friends, don't lose heart. Try again. Try to get into the industry somehow in any role available and work yourself through. Um, even as a trainee, even if you have to get in, even though you have done your bachelor's or diploma, et cetera, or try to get in as probably a trainee staff and learn the work. We know that institutes, institutes such as Fiji National University requires practicals and internships to graduate. So those are very good mediums for Atechi students to learn hands-on work. But there are other programs which does not require internships. Do not be ashamed or uh, hesitant to go and attach yourself to an organization. My school of studies did not require me to do an attachment. But I was glad that my lecturers asked me or informed or encouraged the students to go and attach yourself. They, they told us to go get voluntary experiences. And that's what we did. And that helped us in securing jobs, you know. And, and, and do note that trainee work, trainee roles are not advertised. This is something that you would have to apply yourselves. Um, that you are willing, that you are intending for, an, for a trainee role. We have some very humble applicants out there in our country who even are willing to attach themselves to organizations regardless of what the pay you are getting. This shows that you want to learn the job. And obviously, everyone cannot be hired in by the employers at one time. You, we need to wait for that time to come. Huh? So don't lose heart. There is, there is no low-class job and there is no high-class job. A hotel, for example, won't be performing well if someone did not clean it well. So the work of a cleaner is equally crucial as the work of a manager of that hotel. Do not be ashamed and don't look down on roles. Get into the industry and work yourself through. You will get there. Now, thank you for your time uh, that you have given in today. Again, my encouragement is prepare well when you're giving your interviews. As they say, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So prepare, prepare, and prepare. Thank you for listening, and all the very best in your interview, Pinaka.
All right, so repeating what Cheryl has just said, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Now, Cheryl has given an in-depth, um, like she shared in-depth knowledge about high experiences. And I would, you know, encourage you not to take anything personally, but um, all organizations are different. All recruitment processes are different, which has equally been mentioned by um, Mrs. Roy and uh, Mr. Kumar as well. So these are some of the things which is really going to help you um, be a better vision of you and never know. There's somebody who is willing to recruit you out there. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl, for sharing the, all those sharings of your experiences. This was absolutely marvelous. Now, moving on to our last speaker for the day before we open um, the platform for the many questions that has already come in. And I thank you for those beautiful questions. It's going to give this HR practitioners a bit of challenge to answer this, but that's the point. All right, so may I now invite Mr. Ashish Ram to come on and deliver his uh, message. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Altab. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the Youth VG, Altab and Shanil for this great initiative and the invite that uh, you all have sent to uh, the great talent right here today, uh, bringing us all together. And wow, uh, a great deal of experiences and knowledge has been shared. And I think definitely for everyone and anyone who's applying, this is the time to take what needs to be done next in your next interview, your next application. Now talking about the HR uh, challenges and how do I as an individual applicant bridge myself to an interview like what uh, uh, Cheryl um, has said? How do I bridge myself to the interview level? The one and only answer here is your application, the documentation, the cover letter and the CVs that you do providing these relevant certificates are very crucial in taking you from an applicant to be a shortlisted candidate and to acquire the interview. A lot of times we face the challenges in terms of incomplete applications. We receive hundreds of applications and then majority of them are incomplete. Basically meaning what was advertised and what is required of the uh, job that was advertised has not been received in terms of CVs, resumes. Now talking about CVs and resumes and all using online tools for application, challenges faced are that normally full information is not uh, sent across in terms of CO CV, if there's poor formatting or very lengthy CV as well. Sometimes if we look at the advertisement, some advertisements are very clear in terms of saying, CV is not to be more than three pages or certain number of pages. So we as an applicant need to be mindful of that. We need to put all our information within the specified page length that has been asked for. The flow in the CV is not supportive of the position applied for. Sometimes we apply for positions because we are in very need of a job. We do applications to numerous positions within the organization or to many organizations in a number of positions. And what qualification we have, experience we have, does not support what the position is asking for. Referees mentioned on the CV are very important. Periodically, we need to update this, their contact details in terms of their phone contact, email addresses, Usually referees also change organizations. So we need to be mindful of what contact details we have placed in, because at the end of the interview, a reference check will be done as what was highlighted by Mrs. Vere. So if we are not able to contact these referees, it becomes very hard to say what sort of candidate or what sort of work you have done previously in your organization. Now. Majority of times we have set a format and a very generic CV and cover letter for ourselves, which we use over and over again to send for a number of positions. 
a lot of times positions advertised are very specific in terms of what is required of the applicant. And this is the point that we need to highlight in our CV, in terms of if someone has a work experience, in our work, in our work life, we have done a lot of tasks, a lot of responsibilities have been taken. So definitely we cannot be putting everything on that CV. What we need to do is we need to be specific to what the position is asking us, uh, what the advertisement is asking us and what we are giving. Avoid uplifting KPIs or responsibilities from your current JD and putting it totally in your CV. What makes this is that what happens is that we are not able to establish what have you achieved, what have you done extra in your current role. We would be able to know what job you have done from the reference checks or the position that you ho hold in your current uh, place of employment or what extra uh, in terms of um, attachment or internships if you have done. So what we need to do is we need to be specific regarding our own skills and achievements that we have achieved within the period of our tenure. Now, in terms of candidates or applicants, majority of the times when we are calling for an interview, once you have shortlisted, phone numbers are not working, emails are not responded to. So a humble request, when you do apply, make sure that you're putting your correct email addresses and your phone contacts in your CV and in your application so that when you're contacted, you do not miss that one golden opportunity to attend that interview. Now opportunities for applicants, while we look at uh, the positions uh, that are uh, vacant and advertised in the uh, newspapers or the websites of the companies, it is very crucial and important for applicants to understand the specified JD or the information within the advertisement. Like what uh, Mrs. Roy has also said, is that you need to know what you are applying for. Advertisements clearly state that what are the specific traits that are required of the position. Thus, applicants should focus on these pointers while drafting cover letters and CVs. Now, what Cheryl has also covered is rejections, getting feedbacks that you have not got a job. It can be very demotivating, but for me personally, I take it as a very great opportunity that I had attended an interview because I was able to know how the interview process of that organization is done. This is a learning experience for each one of us because learning from one experience is the best way forward. Each interview session gives a wider knowledge and experience to the applicants. Thus, rather than taking such rejection or unsuccessful interview negatively, we all should take the opportunity as a learning platform that will provide us with a much needed motivation in the next interview. So with this, I would like to say, go ahead, get yourselves prepped for your next interview and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashish. And um, <clears throat> thank you for also adding on about um, um, the reference checks. And I uh, equally feel that this is a very important aspect of uh, the recruitment process. Now, um, once again, uh, a very big Vinaka Vakalevu to um, Jyoti, Venitej, Cheryl and Ashish, and I shall now open the floor uh, for the many beautiful questions that have come um, across uh, our various uh, social media handles. And um, I am going to divide the questions um, to um, um, the HR practitioners uh, on the platform today. And um, for the uh, practitioners, please feel free to add in to the, um, to the other speakers, if you may feel um, that you would like to do so. So um, we can get everybody to unmute now and come on screen. So, so, I, I, will, so I will now start um, asking the wonderful questions that have come in. There is a question from um, 
um, Stuti uh, Aurora, and I will direct this question to Ashish. Ashish, the question for you is, is there any process for checking reference? I repeat, is there any process for checking references? Uh, thank you, Altaf. Uh, yes, there is a process of checking uh, references. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier as well, that it's very important to have your referees um, correctly detailed in your CV or during your application. Um, the process is that after the interview is completed, the HR uh, recruiter would definitely get in touch with the referees that you, you have provided uh, and uh, get your reference checks. Now, each uh, organization has different uh, set format or questions to be asked, but definitely one question that we all touch in is why did the person leave the organization or did the person have any adverse um, experience or action? in terms of discipline. So that's one of the major or one of the common questions, I believe that is uh, part of the reference check. Uh, now the reference check does not only limit to the three or four referees that you have given. Now the practice is also that it is, uh, it goes up to the HR department or some other uh, people that uh, are associated with your work that would be checked or would be called or emailed to ask for reference checks. Sometimes what happens is that we would like to give our best manager or the best uh, officer or a buddy in the organization as our referee. So due to those reasons, the reference checks would not be received in, um, in a healthy manner. So therefore we do extend reference checks to other um, colleagues of the or other managers of the applicant. I hope that answers the question, but uh, definitely um, other practitioners can definitely put an highlight on it as well. Um, if uh, anybody else wants to answer that question from your uh, perspective, please do so. Totally agree with uh, Ashish uh, on the points he has shared. Definitely, we don't limit our reference checking to the uh, reference given or stated in the CV. We extend our reference checking with the HR departments uh, with the different organizations. Uh, Thank you. Just, just an addition uh, to what uh, Ashish has said in terms of uh, the family members at that point, uh, giving the reference of your family members and your friend, uh, of your boyfriend, of your girlfriend. Uh, basically, that's what is happening. Uh, uh, that is actually not a good thing uh, because sometimes what uh, I think Jyoti has shared that giving false information can lead towards uh, terminations and um, that can also lead to other things as well. So please refrain from giving uh, referees of your family members, your dad, your mom, your friends, your colleagues. That is a very, it's a no-no actually, it should not be given. Thank you, Vinitesh. And uh, Cheryl, would, would you like, like to elaborate? elaborate? Yeah, thanks, Alta. Just two points. Uh, it is very wise for candidates to inform the panel on whom not to contact. For example, um, some candidates give the current employer as the referee, and uh, probably you will not be asked if, if, if we can call the current employer, but because you've given the current employer's name and contact as a referee, the HR might call and ask. And, and we do not know how the perception will be of your employer at that point in time, if you are intending to leave. So if you are not sure about any of your um, referees, if you do not want your current employer to be contacted, please say so during the interview process. And yes, obviously, I think one of the questions that has come in, um, what even negative response is given by the reference check. Now, that is something that we, we understand. The reference people who check reference, they understand that there are sometimes personal um, matters might seep in. Some employers might give an uh, adverse record of your employment or your employment experiences with them maybe some reference information received from the past employers are not accurate. That is the reason why we are requesting you to be honest and advise 
if there was a negative experience in, in, in your past employment. And if there was not, then that is totally fine. But what happens is if a candidate has been shortlisted and the employer wants to hire that person, but the reference check is negative, most of the time the employer will call you. They will call you to ask that they will call you to say, okay, we have received so-and-so negative response from the uh, employer. Is this true? Or if this is not true, so this is where I guess you need to try and develop a relationship with the with the employer, your interview panel at that time, that this is actually what I have gone through. What some candidates do, in fact, is they will let the panel know that, okay, that particular employer I had left and you might expect a negative response from them because they did not want to let me go when I was leaving, you know, those kinds of things. So, I mean, these are practical and real things which is happening out there and, and if we, if we have candidates that are honest enough to declare such things or inform, the reference check checking staff will be aware of such things and the decision makers will keep that into account. So try your best. And, and if you are short selected, most of the time the employees will call and discuss about the check. So, yeah. Thank you, Shira. Sorry, one thing that I picked up from uh, what Ashish um, had said, that when you are leaving our organization, it's very essential that you live on a good note. In my experience um, in HR for the past 15 plus years, one of the things that I have personally noticed when um, employees resign, that's when they will try and pull their strings on, you know, uh, getting a lot of sick calls or or those kind of things or try and create you know some kinds of uh, pranks as such it's essential that you know you have still maintain a good relationship with your previous employer wherever possible thank you very much team for answering this and my next question is directed to mr kumar i'm vinitesh kumar mr kumar your question is what is expected by HR when they ask, why should I hire you? This is from Charlene and it came from our YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, basically, it's a good question. Uh, that is a very prominent question that everybody does ask. Basically, when I am doing recruitment, when I am asking that questions, basically, I would like the person to tell me exactly what the person can bring in the benefits towards the organization. Uh, why should I hire you? That means what will you do extra? You know, we don't want a uh, normal person. We want extraordinary person in the organization. As we always know, the goalpost is changing every day. It's moving every day. Right? Uh, we have new targets every day in our life. So we tell us something in the interview that we can hire. You can do extra innovative things. It's not in the box. There's nothing such as box when you're doing and you're answering that kind of questions. You go out of your uh, comfort zone and tell us how good you are, how innovative you are, what ideas you have best to organize, I mean, to improve the organization. Other thing I would like to add into that. For example, if I'm going to an XYZ company for an interview, I'll basically get the pros and cons of the organization done. Right? So what is an activity and what is the public uh, are talking about the organization and all that. When you are asked that question, you tell us, how will you turn that negativity into a positivity? And that's the reason when you strike the interviewer's mind that, yes, this person is a change person. This person can do change management. And that's where we are heading towards, towards change management. And you should be telling us how you can do that, how you can better the organization, how you can build the organization towards the future. Because remember, one day, if you had ever answered the question right, you can be sitting in the post that we are sitting in, into the other side of the room, taking your interview, and you'd be asking the same question to the other person, what change can you bring in? Why should we take you in? Thank you. Thank you, Vinita. So beautifully answered. And post-COVID, we live in a world, you know, where employers are looking for employability skills, such as, you know, someone who has a higher sense of emotional intelligence, um, they can do situational adaptability, and they are very resilient as well. Thank you, Venitesh. The next question, Jyoti, maybe this can be directed to you. And this could be something that can help the youths of Fiji, especially. 
uh, those who are new job seekers. And this question has channeled in um, by Ashaf Chan from YouTube. What are some things employers look for in a CV? So Jyoti, what do you look for in a CV when you are recruiting um, for certain positions uh, from your um, very diversified organization? First of all, I'm looking forward for the experiences you have gained in your lifetime with the employment you have uh, been and your qualifications, uh, what you have done. This is not only the awarded qualifications, but certain short courses you have gone through, certain webinars or presentations or workshops you have attended. Uh, even if you had uh, basically um, in your secondary school had been in some sort of roles or certain uh, you know, associations which you have experienced in. Um, together with that, um, it's uh, basically your dream or your passion or what you want to be or what you apply to be and the reference, uh, basically referees. And brief details of um, your skills as well. Thank you, Jyoti, for answering that. I will now invite um, Ashish, if you want to share your opinion about what are you looking um, in a CV, because I feel right now all the for all the listeners, this could be something very resourceful. And please feel free to answer these questions, um, Benitesh and Cheryl as well. But over to you, Ashish. Uh, thank you, Altab. I think uh, Mrs. Roy has uh, covered in details in terms of uh, what we usually look into in terms of experiences, knowledge, and uh, qualification. But yes, uh, definitely, uh, what we look into uh, during in I mean in in a CV is uh, the qualification, how the experience matches the qualification, and how the qualification and experience matches the uh, set JD of uh, the position that the applicant is applying for. Um, what are the extra activities or extra achievements that the individual has gained during his or her tenure with the company? Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, would be um, helping out a uh, marketing team uh, during a marketing expo. Uh, that can be done via a, a HR practitioner of the organization. So that's an uh, extra mile or going extra beyond your specified job responsibility to assist uh, the other department within the organization for the organization's success. Um, the, uh, as Mrs. Roy has said, the reference, def definitely the referees has to be uh, totally um, there, uh, pre uh, present as well, so that uh, we can contact them sometimes uh, uh, new ex uh, experience would also be that uh, or new practices also are there that even before the interview is called, there are certain times that reference checks are prior done, just to be sure that what the applicant has placed in the CV is actually what he or she has done or has achieved, so that well, during the interview, the questions of the job can be really directed to the applicant. So yeah, that's my take uh, from what uh, we look into in terms of CVs. Thank you very much, Ashish. And now I will move on to the next question. And um, uh, perhaps um, Vinitesh, um, if you could answer this one and collaborated by the other HR practitioners. Vinitesh, this question is from one of our virtual listeners. Her name is Nikat Ali. And she has actually put multiple questions. So I'll try and divide it. Quite a lengthy question, but very wonderful question. Some candidates have vast experience, but due to financial constraints, they may not have a degree. Why can't they be given a chance? Why can't they, be, um, they um, why, why are they being let down? Would you like to answer this for uh, Nikit, please, Venitesh? Thank you, Altap. I guess it's a good question. Uh, definitely, I agree. There is uh, the candidates that do come in, they do apply, they have uh, experience with them, but they do not match the qualifications they're coming through. Uh, basically, 
Uh, for for my our organization, I guess uh, it depends on the recruitment process of the organization. Uh, sometimes it differs. Uh, some organizations they go through the accurate to the MQR that is needed because they go on the other processes to follow. But some organizations they do not uh, uh, require qualifications uh, that much in terms of getting them on board. They look into experiences a lot. But uh, it totally depends on the organizations they are uh, applying into. Uh, for example, if you're applying to a public sector organizations, basically most of the recruitments there is done under uh, our MRS system where, which, where the MQRs need to be met, which requires qualification, your experiences, your other skills, other skills as well. But uh, in terms of the public sector, uh, I mean, in terms of private sector organizations, mostly they do recruit in terms of uh, with a lot of experience uh, on board. So it also is that you choose where you are applying. If you, you think that your uh, education is not that uh, up to par, uh, as per the job role, apply to an organization where the experience is not, I mean, like uh, qualifications are not much taken on. To board. Yeah. Thank you, Vinitesh. And I believe, Cheryl, you would like to add on to that? Yes, thank you. So, um, yes, thank you, Nikit, for that question. And Vinitesh, thank you for that answer. Just to um, put a bit more perspective into that, when an advert is designed, before the designing of the advert, the recruiter has to find out what is, like Vinit said, MQR. MQR is the minimum qualification requirement for that particular role. Not all roles need a degree qualification. Not all roles need an MBA qualification. So whatever your qualification is, it's good. Do not fret about it. And, and try not to think that the recruiters are looking down on it. So, and, and in, in Fiji, we have a broad spectrum of organizations where, like Vinit has said, there are organizations that have to meet a set criteria for that particular role. There are organizations which are more flexible. When you tender in your application, if you have very good experiences, that experience sometimes matches up to that qualification that you have. In fact, if you go back to the advertisements that are published in the papers or on online, you'll see some advertisements say minimum of, um, or they say minimum of uh, MBA in a master's degree in psychology, or, or a slash 10 years experience in a similar field. So that experiences is working in the place of that qualification. So I will just reaffirm what Vinit has said. When, an, when a job advertisement is made, certain qualification is attached to that role. So go for that. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so the next question, I will direct it to um, Jyoti. Um, Jyoti, it's still from Nikit. She says, I know HR personnel are racing against time, but why can't they give candidates an honest feedback about why they aren't suitable for a job or how can, so, or so that they can improve? themselves for the next interview. Would you like to take that, Jyoti? Thank you, Alta. Definitely. As I read the question, it's very important question for every individual. That's why we are here today in the platform. There are people out there who don't know where they fell short or what happened that they did not get the, uh, the role. In my speech, so that you know there may be some frustrated people out there who doesn't know why they were not selected. So uh, definitely the candidates don't come back and ask. When we take uh, interviews, we advise that the selected candidates will be approached because, because of the number of applications we have or the number of people we have called in for interview. So in the second interview, we tell our candidates, our applicants, that only selected candidates will be approached and will be called in. So um, we have not faced any situation whereby somebody has come up and asked, why wasn't I selected? We would be more than happy to tell and share so that you can improve in the next interview. 
So whatever uh, HR challenges which we face, we have highlighted. There are times where definitely people don't read the advertisements properly and they send in the applications. And there are times where um, the experience and the qualifications don't match with the role. So this platform is now created. Um, any individual who requires to know the status of the interview can definitely contact and approach us. Uh, thank you, Jyoti. One thing that I picked up, Jyoti, is what she is indirectly saying to all uh, job seekers out there. One of a good skill is uh, after interview follow up, right? Because the organizations receive thousands of applications and they cannot be getting back unless they have a, um, you know, automated system, like what Vinitesh was talking about earlier on when he was delivering his message. So it's quite nice. Sometimes like when you do call uh, organizations and do a follow up, but it's not that you call our organization right after a couple of hours of the interview and say, how did I do? Am I getting hired? That's, <laughs> that's a no, no. And, you know, if you did a follow up a couple of days or a week later and, you know, you wanted to know, actually, you, you know, you're setting yourself in some good space out there and the organizations might say, oh, this candidate is actually quite passionate and is really looking forward to join our organization. Hey, never know. Miracles can happen. Like what Cheryl said. All right. I have a lot of questions. So I got to move on. And this question, I will direct it to Ashish. Ashish, there is a question by this gentleman, Shalen. And he says, it appears there are many graduates out there unable to secure jobs. Some have found work, but doing something different from what they studied. Is there data available? for the situation or his next question then goes, employees on the other hand, it seems are struggling to find right fit candidates. Does this mean that the universities are producing graduates which are not suited for current employer needs? Uh, thank you, Altha. Okay, uh, the first, uh, part of the question says that uh, uh, there are graduates who are employed but employed in different field than what they have studied. Uh, well, great start. As long as there is an employment, it's a great start because you never know what you do today can create a greater path for you tomorrow. A, pers a very personal information, I started as a salesperson after completing my uh, bachelor's degree in HR management and IR. And from there, I grew. So definitely, I would say, whatever work you do, nothing is small, nothing is big. Get, do what you do passionately, and you will be at greater places afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, the second part is, if is there any data available on this? I, I, I am not too sure. I think there are surveys happening in terms of uh, unemployment surveys. Uh, where And however, is this sort of... Uh, data captured or not, I am not too sure, so I cannot elaborate on that. And uh, the second part, employers on the other hand. No, uh, I would not say the universities are producing uh, wrong candidates. It is what we at that point of time require, what the organization requires in from an applicant, uh, and then they are given the job. Uh, in terms of, uh, as what Cheryl had said, it's very important during high school or in universities to really set a career path. Uh, it's very important to know what jobs are outside out there as well. If you're passionate about becoming a medical practitioner, do not limit yourself just for just to being a doctor. There are various other positions within the medical fraternity which you can be part of. So look at your options correctly in the early stages so that you study what you really want to do in your career and move forward. So that's my take on this uh, question, uh, Alta. All right. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, we have more questions and I shall move on to the next question. And the next question is directed to um, uh, um, Cheryl. And this comes from... Um, Alumita Kahlo. And Alumita Kahlo is saying, Madam, 
what if our school does not give us attachment letters? How else can we attach? Uh, how else can we be attached uh, for experience without the letter? Can you give some tips, please? Shalta, thank you for that. Thank you, Alamita, for your good question. You're asking what if the school does not give attachment letters? And that's correct. There are some um, programs of study that does not require attachment or practicals. And you do want to attach yourself to an organization. So if you do not have a practical letter from the school, you can still give your expression of interest. You can still give your application and your CV to the employer. And you can explain that I have completed or I'm in the midst of um, completion and you would like to acquire some experiences and you're willing to work in any position or in a particular field. And if that particular organization has space available because something else that we need to realistically understand that organizations have budget for manpower. Um, there is every department has, okay, this department has five employees only that is required or can work. In this department, there are 14 employees required because of the amount of work that is required in that particular department. So if there is space or vacancy available for a, a trainee to get attached to the organization, you will be given an opportunity or, or you will just need to express and inform the employer that you want to express uh, that you want to attach yourself that's exactly what happened with me um, my study did not require a practical but uh, i expressed my desire to get attachment and the employer did consider so it does happen we have um, degree students or diploma students who get attached to organizations and do practical without the uh, attachment letters. I hope that will help Alumita. Thank you so much, Cheryl. You've done a wonderful job in answering that. My next question is uh, for Vinitesh. And um, this is from um, Shaniza Bibi. Venitesh Shaniza is asking, while the HR functions are moving from the administrative role, what are the new targets or roles and achievements of the HR with regards to Fiji South Pacific context? Thank you, Altap. Uh, that's a very good question, actually. Uh, probably in my slide, I said, you have to be very innovative and thinking outside the box, right? And this is what it is going. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, HR is no more of processing your leave. Employees leave it is no more of processing only recruitments. There are more of that. Some of the other things where the HR team is moving is the first one is business improvement processes. You know, uh, be a, implement a business improvement processes where it uh, implement quality management tools such as engaging into excellence awards, engaging into quality management uh, program into the organizations. Uh, the second one is you need to become a strategic partner. You need to sit with your, the HR team is moving towards a strategic partner behavior where they sit with the general managers, they sit with the CEOs and they sit with the board members and they speak about what HR is about, what HR change is needed. Secondly, uh, move towards capacity building. Uh, after a strategic partner, you need to move towards a capacity building. Many people outside, they only know that HR HR and the organization, they will take your call, they will return your call, they will do your interviews, they will process your application, they will process your leaves. And that's not, there's a lot of things, you know. Uh, for myself, uh, I have I have started as a teacher in the organization uh, 11 years ago, and then I've moved my way. I have, I'm now a operational person more than the HR person. So it's a move. It's how you learn in the organization. It's not only HR. Uh, capacity building, yes. Be a capacity building person. Talent management, that's where it is going. And it's talent acquisition, talent management, that's where we are going now. The other thing is upper, uh, HR operations. You need to put HR into operation areas now where you will be seen and going and doing HR audits into the organization. For example, uh, measuring productivity uh, into the organization. Productivity nowadays is only done through KPIs and all that, but it can be done more than that. Uh, it can You can go and directly measure HR uh, staff's performance through the HR audits. Uh, for example, now people are working from work from home. HR has to broaden their things. Everything in this process is done by HR. They are the game changers in, in this COVID situation. They organize the welfare of the employees. They, they ensure that the employees are working from home. So it's no more initiative tasks already. Apart from that, the biggest one is now creating culture. 
creating culture is what HR is all about now. You need to ensure that the culture of the organization is created well. And how will you do that? You have to deliver enhanced employee engagement uh, programs and also ensure that uh, create work-life balance within the employees. And the big one, big one now, is create a safe workplace. And that's where the new, uh, re- new roles comes in. Roles such as COVID ambassadors, COVID champions, welfare champions, uh, OHS champions, a fully fledged OHS department, a safety department. Apart from that, some of the new roles um, that HR teams are now having is there's not only HR officers, senior HRs, manager HRs, there's HR analysts, HR partners, strategic partners, HR process analysts. And uh, there's a lot of uh, changes in it. So that's uh, what I can say on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vinitesh. You have answered that very well. And um, I will move on to the next question, directing to um, Mrs. Roy. Mrs. Roy, there is another beautiful, actually, very quite, <laughs> quite a strong question. And this is from Nikita Lee. <laughs> and she says, in terms of reference checking, how sure are you if you have been provided with the correct information regarding a candidate? For example, an example is if a person has personal grudges and gives bad references, how would the candidate know and how would you handle this information once retrieved from the referee? Other other practitioners can join in, uh, collaborate to answer this because this is quite heavy. Thank you, Alta. Uh, this question was answered by Shara, uh, uh, basically um, in terms of reference checking. And if uh, you get a negative feedback or reference from an employer, so uh, definitely if the person um, did not share um, certain realistic uh, information in the interview process, there'll be a cross checking with the candidate, the applicant that we have received this feedback and if you can elaborate more on that. So in that way, you are able to understand what really happened and what is the version from the applicant's uh, point of view. However, negative references mostly are received from the HR department. That department basically is very neutral in all organizations. So they will only share your information which is with them. Yes, definitely, if you have put a referee who you know personally or probably your immediate manager or somebody you had been working for, uh, mostly we receive this information, negative feedback from them um, in terms of probably um, you must have or the applicant must have uh, had some relationship issues with the manager or the supervisor or the staff, basically. So yes, definitely we share this information uh, with the candidate and ensure that whatever is in between, we are able to understand. Thank you, Jyoti. And um, we will get Vinitesh to um, share his opinion about this. Okay, Uh, thank you. Just just a few points uh, on adding to what... uh... Jyoti has said, basically, I'll give you tips to the people that while you're attending interviews, if you had some bad status with your previous employer, try to declare it. You know, That will save something. At least uh, the organization will know that you are being honest with them. You know? So rather than them finding it out from the reference check, you declare it first. You know? Either way, if the reference check is bad, you're not getting it. Rather than declare it, there might be chances of getting it. You know? So that's the good thing to do. You do that. You do declare everything in the interview. And uh, the same, same thing when you're doing conflict of interest declaration within the interview, do declare things so that the interviewers are aware that what is wrong. And the other thing that if you really don't want to get stuck into reference things, try to get your certificate of reference or certificate of service from your employees. That is required by law. Employees need to give it. Nobody can say no to that. So try to get that employer of uh, certificate of service reference uh, from your uh, from your previous employees yeah thank you thank you vinitesh for adding on and my next question is to uh, mr ram 
Um, Mr. Ram, there is a question from Alumita once again, and she's got a very valid question actually. And she says, what if I'm applying for a position and I do not have any working experience? Will my educational uh, referees be accepted? Uh, thank you, Altab. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, for career starters, uh, we all put in our uh, relevant uh, lecturers, tutors, or principals uh, as uh, referees. So definitely, yes, uh, it will be considered uh, depending on which uh, level of uh, job you're applying for. So yes, for, for people who take career break, I mean, to uh, start of their career, definitely those are uh, taken into consideration. Thank you, Altar. Thank you, Ashish. And the next, the next question that I have is directed um, to um, Cheryl. Cheryl, would you like to, um, the, um, this uh, acknowledging this question is coming from Whippy Tala and he's, uh, he is logged in from our Facebook channel. And the question is, um, uh, Cheryl, what are some questions that applicants need to ask the panel with regards to the role applied for? Quite interesting. That's a good question, Vipi. Uh, thank you. So it, it's good for the applicants to ask questions because you will be given the opportunities, even if you are not, you should prepare some questions. And if it is not answered, basically what questions to ask, this will be um, popping up into your mind during the interview. So write it down if you need to and ask those questions that is related because probably you would want to know how long will it take for the panel to respond to the interview result? Will it be one, two weeks, three weeks? You know, sometimes we attend interviews and then we keep on waiting and we do not get a response. So at least if that is clarified, if you really want to, you can ask about the salary package, um, talk about that, talk about, inform them about your notice period and, and ask job related questions. Ask probably um, the specifics of where you'll be based in. Do you have to travel? So it basically, the answer to your question goes back to what all you talk about during your interview process and ask questions related to that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so Cheryl, for answering that. And um, my next question would be uh, for um, Mrs. Roy. Mrs. Roy, this question is um, from Agnes Arti Singh, and she is inquiring, what are some points that has to be written in cover page and application letters that is expectation of an interviewer? Um, I repeat the question, Jyoti. What are some points yeah. that has to be written uh, in cover page and application letters, which is expected by um, the recruiters? First of all, uh, when you read the advertisement, there are certain instructions given in the advertisement uh, whereby you have to state the uh, number or the title of the position uh, uh, on the cover letter so that the recruiter knows which position you're applying for and the reference number of the advertisement. Uh, the cover letter basically uh, will consist of what you have enclosed with your application uh, uh, letter and uh, with your CV and other copies of uh, your certificates and things. And currently what you're doing and uh, your expression of interest basically. It shouldn't be a very long letter because then you have other things attached to your application. Your CV is there, the other certificates are there. So it's a basic uh, letter about the position you're applying for and the reference number and your expression of interest. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, Vinita, should you like to add on? Yes, just a bit. Uh, just adding to what Jyoti said, uh, Few, few of the times when you read the advertisement, it says, please tell us how will you meet the requirements of the job in your cover letter. So, so if the job says that the X, Y, Z needs to be done in the JD, 
So do state that how can you meet that uh, through your kafala at least few points that how can you meet uh, the X uh, thing or the Y thing in that you need to do. So do state that how can you meet the job requirements of the position that is very important. And don't make it more than one page, please. It's very hard to read more than one page. So keep it short and uh, be on point. Your education, your how can you meet the role? That's it. I'm done. Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kumar. Uh, Ashish, would you like to give in a bit of your um, feedback on this? Uh, yes, uh, thanks. Uh, right now, majority of the organizations are also having application uh, forms. So uh, what uh, Mrs. Roy has said, that it has to be very simple because if there is an application form, there are questions already asked, uh, which you would be asked to answer in detail. So definitely not to put uh, same information in all of your letters and forms or documents. So you can always put certain information in your cover letter, certain information in your, I mean, the major information then will move from cover letter to your uh, application form and then definitely your CV and other relevant certificates. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. And the next question, I kind of like this question as well. And it comes from uh, Micah Ralangi, and he has uh, logged, uh, logged in through uh, LinkedIn. Uh, Vinitesh, I will let you answer this and then later collaborated by the other speakers. Vinitesh, the question is, is it true that opportunities are first given to internal candidates, even though their external candidates have similar qualifications as the internal candidates, like the interview process is just a formality, internal candidate is already chosen for the job before the interview. Thank you, Altar. A very, very, very good question. Uh, basically, that's the comment we always receive, right? I guess almost all the HR practitioners say that we receive that questions. Uh, I have never experienced that when I've been recruited. I always feel that I was. I also came from outside from any organization. If that was the case, then I would have been sitting here. Somebody internal would have been sitting here. So I don't believe in that, but I guess it's not happening, uh, not everywhere. I can't be arguing in terms of other organizations, but from my point of view, from my organizations, it's basically not. But on other, other ways, uh, yes, sometimes it's given, but through succession planning, not through the recruitment process. Uh, succession planning is uh, a, a strategy that HR uses, the organization uses to ensure that the people that are working in a junior level are developed for the senior roles or senior roles are developed for the management and the executive roles. And uh, in that way, they do go through the, uh, the recruitment processes. I can argue from the public uh, sector point that uh, they go through the recruitment process, the whole process where the internal and external candidates, this, uh, panel members, they sit in for the interviews. And it goes through relevant processes through that. And I guess, again, to the point, if that was the case, then I wouldn't have been sitting here and probably my colleagues wouldn't have been sitting here. Most of them would have been from the uh, internal would be sitting here. But I agree with your point. It is happening. Probably it's happening other places. I'm not sure of that. But I guess most of them, the, the seat is a succession planning that their staffs are doing well. They apply and they do well in the interview. So you think that you are good from the internal people do good from the internal people then you do good in the interview go above and beyond don't be just good when better can be more good than that so for answer to that question is that you give your best and if you are really good then they will be taking you on board thank you just one word for you fantastic Vinitesh. thank you for answering that and cheryl uh, can we hear you on that Thank you, Altab. Again, that's a good question, Micah. Thanks, Vinit, for your elaboration. Um, in, in, since 2020 has come in, organizations are wanting to be more cost effective. So every cost is scrutinized and, and we try our best to minimize um, expenses. So what we need to understand is all advertisements are costly when they are advertised in newspapers and externally. So if, uh, organizations today have, have policies and procedures whereby um, whenever there is a vacancy available, there are processes that they need to follow. For example, you have an internal vacancy that goes out. So like Vinitesh spoke about capacity building as one of the um, key attributes of HR professionals these days. So 
obviously, and like I said earlier on, try to get into the industry and then work with, work yourself through. So whenever there is a vacancy available, opportunity is given to the internal applicants to apply. And if they meet the criteria, there you go. But whenever advertisements, or most of the time, advertisements are um, published externally, this is because the employers want to attract applications from outside the organization. And sometimes even though um, outside applications do come in, there are very good and robust internal applications that also come in. And internal applicants pay are competitively with the external applications. And internal applicants give or they get the job. So it is both ways. And obviously, like Vinit has said, organizations have different intentions, yes, because there are different requirements for certain processes and advertisements are, or positions are advertised. But let's keep in mind, whenever there are positions advertised, it comes at a cost. If, if the organization has already selected something or somebody internally, they can also release internal applicants and where internal people can apply. So it works both ways. It, it works both the ways and there's no harm in giving your applications. At least the organization knows that you are out there and these are your skills and attributes and your application can be looked into later on probably. Thank you, Cheryl, for um, your, uh, your feedback. Jyoti, would you like to add on to this, please? Yes, Santa, uh, I would like to. And thank you, Vinitesh and Cheryl, for your uh, feedback on this. Uh, like back on uh, the internal processes definitely um, you know the processes we have is uh, what Vinitesh has said very rightly that it is and uh, we do internal search first within the organization and if we find a suitable candidate for the position they undergo the interview process uh, the same criteria as for the position if we were to advertise the position if we find an internal candidate suited for the position, then we don't advertise. We promote the person to the position. If we are not able to find a person suited within the organization, then we do an external advertisement whereby we attract people ex from external environment. So this is how we work. And very rightly, Cheryl has said that it is based on the manpower workforce capacity department has got a structure and structure requires five people so five people will be employed as per the position so first internal um, internal uh, employees or internal search for the position is important then we go externally thank you Thank you, Jyoti, for um, adding that on. <clears throat> My next question is directed to um, Mr. Ashish Ram. How much, and this question comes from Rishav Chan from YouTube once again, how much does GPA matter for a fresh graduate looking for their first job? And if an applica applicant's GPA is not up to mark, what are some things applicants can do to appeal to employers? Uh, thank you, uh, Yes, academically, uh, GPA is important. Uh, getting good grades is definitely important. You are spending your own money, um, or if you are sponsored, someone is sponsoring you, you're spending someone's money to acquire that qualification. So please strive towards the best. Now, uh, in terms of GPA uh, into employment, uh, no, uh, not every time GPA is uh, considered or is a markdown or a plus point because certain uh, um, positions or second certain organizations, they only require you to have a certain certification, be it a degree, a diploma or a trade certificate. Uh, so yes, uh, it's not too much of a um, markdown, but definitely you need to strive towards uh, when you're in university, Please give you 100% in and definitely try uh, thrive towards achieving a greater grades. Um, uh, is there any second part of the question as well? Is is it something? Hey, sorry. 
Um, no, you have answered it. You have answered it. Thank oh, you. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. And I'll move on to the next question. And um, this question, um, maybe um, uh, we'll direct it to Mr. Kumar. Mr. Kumar, the question comes from Michael Fong. And his question is, what's your recruitment policy on an individual with HIV AIDS or any other disability? Thank you, Antap, and thank you for that question. Basically, recruitment policy for everyone is same. There's no, that's why we call it equal employment opportunity. We recruit everyone, regardless of uh, the gender, they are, if, uh, in terms of HIV and AIDS, we don't uh, uh, discriminate anyone based on that. So our recruitment policy is straight away, same to everyone, no discrimination, and we employ everyone, whoever comes in, and they, if they suit and they meet the requirements, they are in. No discrimination at all. Thank you, Vinitesh. And Cheryl, would you like to add on to that? Just a little bit, Alta. Um, yes, organizations do have good policies such as equal employment opportunities and anti-discriminatory policies regarding um, recruitment. What we just need to keep in mind is there are some roles. Uh, roles have requirements such as physical requirements as well. Some roles um, would require heavy work. So it would, it would need somebody who can, for example, lift heavy weights, you know? Um, if you ask me to lift a heavy weight, then there'll be a problem and I cannot be recruited for that job. It needs somebody as strong as maybe Ashish and Vinitesh, you know, people who can, or maybe Jyoti as well. So, so those things we will need to keep in mind. So yes, obviously sickness and disease should not be a deterrent in recruitment, but the role requirement has to be kept in mind. Uh, yeah, because back in school, I was one for, uh, can the women be given the opportunity to work in the Vatikola long well, gold mine? No, why can't we go underground? But then somebody explained to me, there is a reason why, because it has to do with your health and safety. Uh, so those things are also kept into mind. <laughs> Um, thank you, Cheryl, as we are running out of time, but I will still take a few more very good questions that have been uh, specifically targeted to uh, various speakers, one for uh, Mrs. Roy and one for Mr. Kumar. First one, ladies first, so we'll give it to Mrs. Roy. Mrs. Roy, it's from Senimili Wangani um, Vavalangi, and the question is, I believe that most of the organization are promoting equal employer opportunity when doing background check of the organization before sending expression of interest for the position. From your experience as a HR manager, have you ever felt excluded or powerless with decision making while deciding on which candidate to choose due to being a woman holding a position in an organization. Thank you, Alta. Very strong questions, Emily. Would love to answer that. Definitely, no. I have not ever felt excluded or powerless with the decision-making uh, process while deciding which candidate to recruit. That's why we have a panel. Interview is not conducted by one individual person. And it's we have a panel and the panel consists of HR. At the same time, certain other executives of the organization. And our interview is basically focused on the requirements of the position. And our ratings are given according to the requirements of the role. So in no point ever I have felt that I was undermined or pressured to go otherwise. I hope that answers your question, Sydney. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jyoti. Um Jyoti has been an inspiration to many women out there. I call her the um, women empowerment, Ein woman, okay? And um, there is one more question. I will allow Ashish to answer this question. 
And Ashish, the question comes from Niket Ali. Niket has been quite active and engaged. Thank you, Niket. Thank you very much. Maybe you, you would be one of those that we would, you know, offer some CV consultation, free CV consultation. Okay. She says, my last question, finally, <laughs> is what is your salary expectation? How does the HR expect? What does the HR expect? As answers. Please advise, how can a candidate answer this? Okay, uh, thank you, Alpha. So the first part is where how do uh, HR expect the answer in terms of uh, what is your salary expectations? Uh, we would like to uh, definitely know. Um, so, okay, let's go back to the advertisement. Now, certain companies, certain organizations do put up the salary band into uh, the advertisement. So it's very important for a candidate to analyze your own skills, your own knowledge and experience in terms of what salary are you pay, uh, what sal what salary are you wanting or would demand for now if you are very um, uh, if you lack few of the uh, things here and there and you think you would go from uh, uh, if we have a salary band from a to z uh, sorry a to c so you say okay i, I uh, given an opportunity i might uh, uh, work with a and definitely gradually with my skills and my abilities and what value I bring into the organization, the employer can review me and definitely compensate me accordingly. Um, now, what the uh, what the candidate can do and what once I had said in an interview as well is that um, when I was asked this question, so I, I politically answered this, saying that, oh, Okay, um, definitely the organization has a budget for the um, position and I am open for negotiation. You can make me an offer and I'll definitely negotiate or accept the offer looking into what you are offering me. So though that is uh, being um, playing safe and also being uh, answering the question that, you know, uh, definitely I, if I have already um, applying for a, electrical position, a junior electrical officer or something, I, I cannot ask for, let's say, a, a rate which the senior is receiving or the seniors in the market are receiving. You know, definitely I need to keep myself known to, okay, this is what I need to start off. So as a starter, the safest way to say is, I am I want to start my career. Give me an opportunity. Let me show you what I can do. And definitely I'll go ahead with you, what you are offering me today. Yep, that's that's it. Uh, thanks, uh, Nikat. I hope I answer your question. Okay. Thanks, Alta. Uh, thank you, Ashish, for answering that. Cheryl, would, would you like, like to, to add on to it before we take the last question for this uh, webinar? Sure, Alta, thank you. Just one word of uh, advice to the listeners, be honest. Because when we when you are asked what salary or wage are you expecting, the, the person who's asking the question expects an answer. Sometimes we receive answers such as up to you. And the reason when you ask why do you want to leave your present employer, then they say, um, I think I'm not paid as I should be paid. But then when you ask them, okay, what is your salary expectation? If you're given this job, then the answer is, um, what, it, what is your budget or whatever you give me, I will take. So these are answers which are not accepted. When, you are, when we are asked how much do you expect, please give an answer. A good answer would be if you are very happy with your job and the place where you're working, then definitely you want something more. You know. So if you are currently paid 20,000, maybe you could say something more than 20. Or if you really want to get 30, then you say, Maybe by 30, I can consider leaving and joining your organization. So some something of that sort. It helps in decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Cheryl, for adding on to that question. And ladies and gentlemen, now our final question for this webinar series. And it is directed to the one and only Mr. Vinitesh Kumar. Mr. Kumar, this question comes from um, Kavita. 
And Kavita wants to know, should HR practitioners consider broadening their knowledge in psychology, considering Generation Z coming into the work field? Thank you. Yes, good question, Kavita, and thanks, uh, Alta. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, psychology plays a major part into HR. Uh, I believe every person in HR should have a bit of knowledge of psychology. And yes, if you're considering to do your uh, degree or majors or in psychology, go for it. Because it helps you to understand your team. It will help you to understand the people around you that you are working. And it will make your work go easy. And definitely, Kavita, if you do do that, do that degree, do let me know. Probably I'll post for you, you know. <laughs> so because that is all nations need that because there's very low qualification in Fiji. No, hardly people goes into that. But nowadays is needed. People definitely depending, especially this COVID situation has made people think out and about of things. You know, they are facing difficulties, they are facing a lot of problems at their home. And this kind of uh sorry, this kind of personality in a HR department will definitely help. Uh, the team to grow. So yes, if you are thinking, do that. And no psychology, there are so many other parts into uh, parts into the HR that you can choose. There's not only HR and management you can do. Uh, I have a, I have few friends who have done IT and uh, IT management. They have done uh, science as well, and they are with the finance department. And basically, it's helping them now. Um, in my organizations, currently, I have recruited two uh, two attaches, uh, two attaches which are from the MBBS. They're doing the MBBS, third and fourth year students. They are doing our COVID testing in the organization. So uh, those kind of, that will also help the organization uh, go further ahead. And sorry, uh, can I just add on to the question that Michael has uh, asked about the policies on yes, HIV? Go ahead. Yeah, yes. uh, on that, uh, Michael, while we do recruitment, and we, as Cheryl has said, we also have uh, training programs for them. We have uh, in-built training programs in the policy for HIV and that. We do train them. We send them to medical centers for their testing and stuff. We have in-house, uh, bring in in-house doctors for testing and we have counseling programs inserted and that's where the psychology part plays in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vinita. Jyoti, isn't it great that both of us have taken our journey into psychology these days? We, we have quite a big uh, appreciation of that. What do you share? Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Alta. Very true, Vinitesh. And most of all, psychology makes us to understand ourselves properly and the areas where we need to improve ourselves. It, it's very interesting, very interesting. And once you see yourself, you will be able to then work with other people as well and see lots of positive needs, positivity among other people as well. Okay, thank you, Jyoti. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our Grab a Coffee HR talk show. And this is the first out of the many that we are planning to host and never know, we might get one of the speakers to come on live solo next time. So thank you so much to the presenters. And um, before we finish, I will hand it over to our founder of Youth Fiji, Mr. Shanil Shetty, and he will finish this up for us. Thank you very much. Reporting live from Youth Fiji, Altab Khan. Bye bye. Thank you, Altab. Uh, thank you to all the speakers that have come on board for this uh, uh, HR talk show. Obviously, I think this is a one of a kind webinar to be able to get uh, such dignitaries. You know, in one session is uh, a big achievement for us. So once again, thank you to everyone for agreeing to be a part of this. Um, so yes, as Altab has said that there are many more sessions to come. This is basically because uh, we, we agree and the speakers also agree that there is uh, a minimal uh, support structure for graduates who are coming out of universities and who are out there looking for a job. They, they are not that well guided. So through these programs, uh, even those of you who are actually, you know, watching the recordings, uh, it would be really good for you to uh, go through and then uh, maybe after every or before every single interview, you could go through this particular uh, talk show and, you know, get the points and uh, also make amends to your CVs. Obviously, there were some questions, actually a lot of questions 
that we couldn't answer due to the time constraints but uh, uh, be uh, be ready for the next webinar uh, you can always put forward your questions also uh, we do have uh, we we have collected your questions so we will be giving it to the uh, speakers and as soon as we receive response we will be able to contact you with the solutions as well also something to note for the speakers uh, in the chat you will be seeing a link that is for our discord uh, channel so every sunday at 7 pm uh, together with hitesh chandra uh, we have a youth talanwa session uh, in which we actually have a peer to peer session with uh, all the youth uh, in fiji and we just uh, go to that level and take questions from them so it's basically not just us presenting it's uh, the other way around it's the youth who are giving us the topics and then uh, there's some really interesting stories that are shared as well so we will also try to get on board uh, these hr personals as well uh, they can also come on board for our youth alanoa so we, this is a new platform that is coming uh, about so there are a lot of things that are happening uh, and uh, through this particular session as well we have seen a lot of positive remarks from uh, all of these uh, dignitaries and they have all uh, you know been very supportive of uh, what we are trying to achieve through youth fiji so thank you once again for coming on board and agreeing to be a part of uh, our talk show uh, also yes as altab has said we will be having future sessions and uh, most probably we will be bothering you again to come on board and speak to uh, uh, our other members uh so please do feel free if if you do have something that you want to share with uh, our members uh do bring it forward put it forward also we have a huge uh, community on viber as well with 16000 members so we are free to all the hr uh, reps also who are uh, tuned in you can use our viber platform to put forward your vacancies and uh, your adverts Uh, it is completely free of charge uh, i think one major issue that we saw was that advertisement uh, placing job adverts is very expensive whether it be in media or online so what we have done is we may really uh, we wouldn't put it as affordable we just put it as free so it's basically free you can just reach that uh, level of audience free of charge so please do come forward uh, do support us and also if you are Uh, someone who wants to speak to the youth you can also contact us to become a speaker for our next uh, session uh, thank you once again shanil before we finish just one last thing i promise all of us over here we want to uh, acknowledge jyotika roe and just to let everybody know who's out there listening to us today jyotika has been all of ours manager at one state of life so um both um our uh, all of us um Cheryl and Benitesh uh, we were all man and myself we were all managed by Jyotika in our previous employment thank you Jyotika for guiding us for coaching us you've done you've done as well thank you very much and we wish everybody a very lovely evening bye bye